July 1962. These troops, forming a special task force, were the first in our Army's history to engage in a tactical exercise supported by live nuclear firepower. Every man was required to wear a security badge and a radiological dosimeter. Early in July, the task force arrived at Nellis Air Force Base, the railhead nearest to the Atomic Energy Commission's Nevada test site where the exercise would be carried out. The mission had been given a high priority and a short get ready schedule. In six weeks from the time the selected commanders and troops were alerted, they were organized into a mechanized force, given intensive training, and moved from their home station, Fort Lewis, Washington. The troops were transported by commercial and military buses from Nellis Air Force Base to the test site, a distance of 100 miles. Arriving at the AEC test site, the troops were billeted in a trailer camp located approximately 25 miles from the selected exercise area. This field exercise was not a wargaming maneuver, but rather a pre-designed demonstration of the tactical employment of low-yield nuclear weapons in conjunction with conventional weapons. Close support weapons were set up in advance in preparation for registering and firing upon pre-selected target areas in the first phase of the operation. The objective of this operation is to demonstrate tactically the infantry and armor's current organic low-yield nuclear delivery system, the Davy Crockett. The tactical situation has been pre-designed to illustrate the employment of Davy Crockett in support of an attack. The light Davy Crockett launcher, maximum range 2,000 meters. The two heavy Davy Crockett launchers, maximum range 4,000 meters. The supporting artillery battery. And the battalion headquarters. The battalion has been ordered to secure objectives one and two. Company A will attack to seize Objective 1. Company B will attack to seize Objective 2. To assist in breaching the enemy's defenses, one Davy Crockett nuclear round will be detonated here 26 minutes prior to the attack. Key representatives from all the services and other interested agencies were invited to observe this historic event a critical first for the Army. The President was represented by close personal advisors. The countdown for the firing of the nuclear round was under control of the Defense Atomic Support Agency. Safety measures for the exercise were supervised by the Chief Safety Officer. At H minus five minutes, all troops were ordered to take cover in previously prepared trenches. The round was launched at H minus 17 seconds to accomplish H hour impact on the desired ground zero at a range of 2,852 meters. The round was set for a low height of burst. It detonated perfectly, releasing its lethal radiation. Like any other nuclear weapon, the Davy Crockett gives off three basic effects. Heat, blast, and nuclear radiation. By far the most significant effect is its deadly initial nuclear radiation. By this time, the light Davy Crockett, which had been displacing in the rear of the advance, was in position to begin adjustment of fire on the target of opportunity. The heavy system was required to alter its route of displacement because of radiation intensities and was therefore somewhat delayed going into position. Nevertheless, within 11 minutes of the time Objective 1 was taken, 
the heavy system was in position and firing its final adjusting round. The Davy Crockett was not designed to win battles by itself. Only when it is integrated with other combat power available to the commander, as was demonstrated today, does this weapon fill the need for which it was designed to give the infantry and armor unit commanders simple yet effectively responsive nuclear firepower.